In this video, we take a look at environment fog, an atmospheric effect that simulates fog, haze, atmospheric dust, and other atmospheric aerosols. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to v 4 Cinema 4D. It's a massive 13 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of v 4 Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. If I run the IPR right now, we get this bare bone lighting with very sun and sky. By adding environment fog, we can really make it come alive. Let's see how to do that. You can add an environment fog from VRA menu under volumetrics or from VRA toolbar down here. The first parameters I want you to look at are fog distance and fog height. Fog distance controls the fog density, larger values make the fog less dense, while smaller values make it more dense. If I set the fog distance to let's say 100 cm, we get a dense fog, and if I start increasing it to 500 cm, 1000 cm, 2000 centimeters or 5000 centimeters, the fog becomes less dense. Then we have fog height as the fog is supposed to start from a certain height and continue downward indefinitely. This parameter determines the starting point along the y-axis where the fog starts. Let me set the fog distance to around 1000 cm to get a denser fog. Now if I decrease fog height to 20 cm, the fog starts from a much lower height. And if I start increasing it to 100 cm, 200 or 500, the fog will start from a higher height downward. Let's set the fog distance to 5000 centimeters and fog height to 500 centimeters. Using the fog color, you can determine the exact color of the fog or haze in your scene. Let's try a few. Let's go for a bluish fog color with the RGB values of 204, 242, and 255. To add a bit more to the overall realism, we can turn on Scatter GI. So let's do that. When Scatter GI is enabled, the fog will also scatter global illumination, which obviously makes the image look better, but it would slow down the render. And Scatter Bounces controls the number of GI bounces inside the fog when Scatter GI is enabled. So if I increase it from 1 to 2 or 3, It will bounce the light rays more and will result in a brighter scene that would still make the render slower and harder to clean compared to when the scatter GI was 1. In some cases we can use fog emission color instead of the scatter GI and get quite similar results without an increase in render time. Fog emission gives the fog or dust particles some sort of self-illumination. Let's turn off scatter GI and change the fog emission color from black to white or Actually, let's use the blue fog color here as well. And now if we start increasing the emission multiplier to let's say something like five, immediately you start to see a quite similar result to when we had scatter GI turned on and the render cleans up much faster. 
obviously scatter gi will give you a bit more control as you can adjust scatter bounces but it is much slower we can try a few other fog emission colors just to see what we can get for now get back to the black emission color and enable scatter gi when you add environment fog to your scene, you have put an obstacle for the light beams to reach further and therefore you will get a darker scene overall. To remedy that a bit, you can obviously adjust your camera exposure, but uh, we can simply adjust the exposure and contrast a tad in the frame buffer. So I'm going to add an exposure layer and increase the exposure 2.35. And contrast to 0.15. That looks better. Let's quickly take a look at these fog density and transparency parameters. Fog density is a multiplier for the fog distance parameter. Let's set it to 2 for now. You can also control it with a black and white texture like a noise map. For now, set it back to 1. Fog transparency controls the transparency of the fog volume at a thickness given by the fog distance parameter. Brighter colors make the fog more transparent and vice versa. For now, let's set it to the default color. And let's unhide this cube. Let's say we want to make sure that the environment fog is only visible inside this cube. All you have to do is to make that object, or this cube in this case, a child of the environment fog. To see it better, let's get back to the environment fog and decrease the fog distance to maybe 200 centimeters. And now the fog is only visible within that box. So that's how you create a fog container. Under the fade out tab, we have this fade out radius value. When this value is larger than zero and the fog effect is contained, this option allows you to specify a falloff radius for it. This way the fog effect does not have sharp edges at the edges of the container. For now set it to zero and remove the cube and unhide it and set the fog distance to 5000 centimeters. You can control different parameters like fog color, density, transparency, or emission color with a texture. When you use a texture to control those parameters, this texture samples value under the ray marching tab will be used to determine the quality of the texture sampling through the fog volume. And this step size parameter controls the overall quality of the environment fog. The lower the value, the better it is. But you normally don't have to change these parameters that much really. Under the options tab, if you come down to this ray filter section, you can control what ray types does that environment fog effects, reflection, refraction, diffuse, and so on. Now, that's the basics of the environment fog. You can use it more creatively even in interior scenes. Let's go to the second scene for this lesson for that purpose. And let's quickly run IPR to show you what we have. We have a V-Ray Sun with a saturated orange color shining through the windows with its intensity set to 10. A dome light with the same orange color, the intensity of the dome light is set to 50. We have six green mesh lights, which are these lights that are hanging from the ceiling. And finally, an environment fog. The only parameters that I have changed here are the fog distance and fog height. The fog distance is set to 600 centimeters and height is set to 350 centimeters.
because in this scene we have multiple lights that are affecting the environment fog, we need to have a way to control how much each light contributes to the atmospheric effect. And if you select one of the mesh lights, for example, under the options tab, you will find this parameter called atmospheric contribution amount that controls how much that light affects or illuminates the environment fog around it. For example, if I select all the mesh lights and zero out their atmospheric contribution, they stop affecting the environment fog altogether. And as I start increasing the amount, they affect it more and more. And obviously you can select each individual light and control its atmospheric contribution separately from the rest. Now let's go for a final render. I'm gonna increase the resolution to 1920 by 1080. Enable V-Ray Denoiser. And now we can start a final render. Uh, for now, let me stop the render and clear the frame buffer and show you the final render that I have saved in the history panel. Here it is. Now we can add a curve correction to add a bit more contrast. And adjust the lens effects as well. So in this lesson, we learned about environment fog. See you in the next video. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.